Think about this. How many of us, let, let's just say we take all of us and separate us all to different parts of the planet. We all go to a different city somewhere, anywhere. And there's no church and there's nobody that believes correctly. And you're going to start a church. Can you do it? Absolutely not. You cannot take this and go somewhere else and do it again. Because you can't afford the building. You can't make the down payments on all the electric. You don't know where to buy pews. How many of us are prepared to, to duplicate the church? We're not. And that was never the point. See, we made church the thing, and we need church. But church is an expression of what disciples are. It is not the crowning glory of being a disciple. Scripture commands us to fellowship together. It commands us to worship together. It commands us to pray together. This is part of being the body. But what if the body is taken away? What happens then? Now, here's what you can do. Every one of us can do is we could take you, drop you anywhere, and you can make disciples if you get it. If you're a disciple, how could Paul? This oh, this frustrates me to no end. How could Paul go and start a church and then leave after a few months? They don't even have the sound tweaked yet. They haven't even installed the projector. Three months in, how can they be a church? Because none of that stuff mattered. What mattered is that they had people there who get it. Were they right? Did they have their morals all in line? Read the book of Corinthians. You got some great stories and great teaching in the New Testament because there's people who got it who didn't yet have their morals figured out. But we want to straighten out everybody's morals and then say, now they get it. No. If they get it, whatever it is, and I'm hoping you figure out what it is, once they get it, the morals will straighten out. The way they manage their money is going to straighten out. But if we run around and try to duplicate church, that's why it's such a struggle in the United States. And, 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 and the toughest thing around here is we have this Christian mentality that you have to have church. And so you got to go search for the best church. No, I don't want to be the best church. I want to be the best disciple. And if we all become the best disciples, we'll have the best church. But sometimes we've got the cart in front of the horse. Which brings me to the planarium. And I don't think it's going to be nearly as beneficial to talk about it as is to see it, okay? It's a beautiful little creature. There it is. I worked all night to perfect that. This thing has nerves. It has muscles. It doesn't have a spine. It is a worm. It's a little flat worm. Lives in the water. Uh, let's think around the Mediterranean or something. Okay, so this creature has a head. I don't know if it actually has functioning eyes, but it has a head. It has a mouth. And this is the amazing thing about this creature. You can chop it up. You chop it here, and it's going to grow the rest of that back. You can chop this thing up 300 times, and every slice will grow the body again, and it will have its old memories still. If you were to take 300 disciples, we could separate every one of them, set them anywhere on the planet, and guess what would happen? The body would grow again. We might not have lights and sound like we have it here, but we could have the body of Christ because a disciple gets it. I want to be part of that. I want to be a disciple who's got it going on on the inside. Thank you, Jesus.